Around about 23 hours away from the payrolls report in the United States, here's the take from PIMCO and Tiffany Wilding writing the following. Our below consensus forecast, forecast reflects our expectations that are stronger than average, a stronger than average separations in early 2020 over the next few quarters. Nominal wage growth is likely to continue to be stagnant. I'm very pleased to say Tiffany joins us now. Tiffany, your take then going into tomorrow, what are you looking for? Yeah, well, the labor report can be quirky from month to month, and, and that's certainly going to be the case, I think, this month. So what we saw was stronger than average retail hiring for the holidays. And what that tends to mean, as you suggested, is stronger separations or what, you know, people kind of getting um, getting back out of the labor market um, after that holiday hiring. You know, so I think there's also some things with weather that could, you know, benefit the construction sector and leaguer. But I think that the bigger point here is that, um, is that uh, payroll growth is decelerating. Um, we'll also be watching aggregate hours growth. This is something that we've been very focused on. You know, that plus um, uh, aggregate incomes have been decelerating. That'll ultimately weigh on consumption, which we've also seen decelerate. Are you seeing signs of a slowdown? Um, well, you know, certainly we we see that in the in the labor market data. Um, I think you're going to see that in the in the GDP data. You've seen it in the GDP data in the fourth quarter as well. You're probably going to see a little bit more of that in the first quarter. Um, it could actually be you know quite bad. We tend to have seasonally uh, weak uh, consumption in the first quarter, but on top of that, I think there's also going to be some temporary you know drags from from uh, you know lower exports from the you know the issues with China as well as um, the Boeing issues. Your cyclical outlook had pretty much things at stall speed in places like Europe. Here in the United States, it wasn't a super constructive outlook for U.S. growth. Yeah. Now with the growth scare in China too, how shaky do things look like for the global economy from your perspective? Yeah, well, I mean, I think there's a lot of unknowns, um, you know, with the with the coronavirus and, and China. And I think, you know, first and foremost, obviously, this is a humanitarian crisis and, and our heart goes out to the to the people involved. You know, but trying to think about, you know, there will be some economic disruption. I think understanding how long that disruption will be and the magnitude of that in China um, is, is what we have to try to figure out over the coming months and quarters. You know, that will spill over into the U.S. But right now, we haven't lowered our forecast for full year growth because ultimately, we, you know, we think these, these things do kind of resolve themselves. People feel better into the summer and, and growth will bounce back. One thing I've been trying to get my hands around is what constitutes a material reassessment <laughs> of the outlook. Yeah. I think that's the million dollar question over at the Federal Reserve right now. Have we met that? Um, you know, I, it doesn't seem like we have. Um, you know, and I will say that last Friday, I think um, our uh, former colleague, Rich Clarida, was on yep. basically saying that, you know, if the coronavirus issue is kind of a one to two quarter slowdown, you know, the Fed will tend to look through it. You know, what the Fed is trying to do, because monetary policy works with a lag, is they're trying to understand, you know, is this going to be something that's more ingrained, you know, or, or is it sort of a temporary slowdown? You know, I think one thing that they're going to be looking at is, you know, some of the maybe the weaker manufacturing uh, uh, companies, you know, across the world or, or otherwise, do you start to see the stress in credit markets or broader tightening in financial conditions, maybe because of a, a little bit more of a prolonged and so, so far, we haven't seen that, no. Tiffany. But something that hasn't been resolved is the big question of last year, that tug of war between manufacturing weak, services resilient. Yeah. There was some hope that we'd resolve that in a favorable way at the start of this year. Yeah. Are we questioning that again? Yeah. Well, I mean, I think there are indications globally that manufacturing growth was starting to stabilize. It's really important to understand that the U.S. lags global growth. It, it hasn't yeah. tended to lead. So U.S. manufacturing has still continued to look weak. It'll probably look weak for a little bit longer. We were getting some early indications, I think, in the U.S. with the most recent ISM uh, report, which which actually rebounded a bit. So I think overall, you know, the the prognosis is still we'll probably get some rebound um, and some stabilization in, in manufacturing growth this year. I want you to help me with one final thing. The guidebook to read the payrolls report tomorrow, <laughs> given that a lot of this data, everything we're seeing from January predates the yeah. coronavirus scare as it picked up in China at the back end of last month. How do we get a read on the data properly when we haven't seen what February looks like yet? Yeah, I, I think that's that's exactly right. So, you know, some of the data probably will be discounted because we're really trying to see what February looks like. You know, some of the early things that we'll be looking at, um, you know, trade with China, so the trading partners day, trade with China to try to understand the amount of disruption. But it's really going to be, you're right, the February data, that's really when that additional week of holiday was in um, the first week of February. So you see the, the main manufacturing uh, disruption globally it's starting in that February data. Final question, the Fed market pricing looking for maybe one 
two cuts in 2020. Yeah. What's the house view now? Yeah, I mean, we still think the base case is, is that you, uh, you remain on hold. Um, I certainly think the bar to cutting rates is much lower than the bar to hiking rates. Um, you know, there's a, there's a Federal Reserve review, I think, on, on the margin because inflation has tended to run below the Fed's target. You know, they're, they're, they want to keep the economy, um, you know, I wouldn't say we're running hot right now, but they want to keep the economy in a good place, as they say. Um, you know, and so certainly they're going to react, I think, to prolonged weakness.